guys, welcome back to another What's in the Night Sky. It is May, which means we're approaching summer, so the nights are getting shorter, and it means that I've finally taken my hat off. <laughs> So the nights are getting shorter guys, so make the most of the darkness while you can. We start the month with a pretty foolish moon, but the full moon for May is not until the 29th of May, and then that means that the new moon is on the 15th of May, and that gives us a Milky Way window of about the 11th to the 23rd. The Milky Way, much like last month, will rise in the southeast at about midnight, and then by about 3, 4 a.m you'll find it in the south and it'll be a bit more vertical. Much like last month, the Milky Way is kind of surrounded by planets. So you've got Jupiter, which is out pretty much all night now. Just after sunset, you can find it in the southeast. It crosses the southern skies into the southwest by the morning time. And Jupiter is also in opposition right now. So Earth is right in the middle of the sun and Jupiter, which means that Jupiter will be shining its brightest this month. I think it reaches opposition on May the 9th where it'll be shining at a bright magnitude of minus 2.5. Just about in front of the Milky Way core we've got Saturn which is just in front of the constellation Sagittarius. That is in a very slow retrograde motion at the moment and then further to the left you've got Mars which starts the month at a magnitude of minus 0.4 but gets brighter by the end of the month reaching a magnitude of minus 1.2. Lastly, we've got Venus, which can be found in the west-northwest just after sunset for a couple of hours, and it's shining at a really bright magnitude of minus 3.9 this month. There are a couple of conjunctions to note this month. On May the 5th, on the morning of May the 5th, we have the moon right in the middle of Mars and Saturn. This waning gibbous moon will also be the reason that we won't really see any Eteroquarid meteors this month. There is a meteor shower, the Eteroquarids. It's more of a southern hemisphere meteor shower, but we do get to see meteors here in the pre-dawn hours from the northern hemisphere, and that is because the radiant point, which is in Aquarius, doesn't rise above the horizon until sort of early hours of the morning, but most of them are gonna be washed out by the moonlight. We should still see them. I mean, at its peak, the meteor shower has about 55 per hour. A quarter of those leave pretty persistent vapor trails as well so if you do fancy trying your luck um, go out around May the 5th to the 7th and point your camera to the east and cross your fingers and then on the 17th of May is my favorite conjunction this is my favorite photographic opportunity this month a crescent moon and Venus in the west northwest just after sunset so get a telephoto lens on and really zoom in and you should have some nice twilight ambient light to light up the foreground as well as getting the moon and venus in there as well lastly on may the 27th a pretty foolish moon will be right next to jupiter so there might be an opportunity there to use a moon bazooka as a sigma 150 to 600 mil really zoom in there and you might be able to pick up jupiter's moons as well as our moon within the same photograph uh, not 100 percent sure on that but i think it's possible if anyone does happen to try that out. Lastly, as we are approaching summer, the sun doesn't shoot below the horizon as quickly as it does in winter. So there's an extended chance of seeing the International Space Station pass over as it catches the sunlight as it traverses the night sky. So do check on any ISS passover times. I highly recommend the app ISS detector. It gives you a good list of all the possible passovers as well as any iridium flares. It can give you notifications when the ISS is about to fly over and it gives you this really nice visual representation of where it's going to appear in the night sky and how it's going to move across the night sky. So check out that app. I do believe it's free. There's a few ads on there. You can probably pay for the ad free version but it's a good app. That is it for this month. There's nothing else really exciting going on, nothing worth noting. Pretty similar month to last month. So, on to the hashtag Wittens. Last month, I asked you guys to tag pictures of planets. 
and there were quite a lot that I wanted to feature this month. I really thought this hashtag was going to die after like a month, but you guys, you guys have been killing it. So I've managed to whittle it down to four, starting with this beautiful conjunction of a crescent moon and Venus taken by Kirkachu at night using the moon bazooka the sigma 150 to 600 mil or she likes to call it the copernicus cannon there's another opportunity to get a photograph very similar to this on may the 17th i'll definitely be going for it um so good luck to you guys too next up is this image by jacob of jupiter above the carl wendell mountains in the alps i hope i said that right but really love the colors in this one and i love that you get a little bit of reflection of jupiter in that lake in the foreground and i think you can also see a couple of lights on the mountain probably people climbing the mountain it's a really cool image i really like this one Next up is this image by Joe taken in Ontario of Saturn and there's a lot of stuff I like about this image, the colours, the processing, it's very clean and noise free. I love that there's a bit of mist in the air giving that kind of Akira Fuji effect to Saturn making it kind of glow and pop. And I love the attention paid to the foreground so you've, you're dragged into the image, you follow these stones into the image and up into Saturn and it's a really beautiful image. Finally, my favourite of the month. He featured in last month's Wittens, but this month was my favourite image of the month. It was taken by Matt Stansfield, and I love how you've got the Milky Way in there, but the Milky Way is not the main subject. It's more of a lead in line, taking you into this wonderful composition of the dam, and then you find yourself kind of going across the dam and through the valley and up to the focal point of Jupiter which is shining super bright love the processing on this one the colors everything is just spot on so thank you for sending that in thank you everyone for using the hashtag Whitman's you guys have been literally blowing me away I genuinely thought this hashtag was gonna fail on the first month this month Siemens, this is the last opportunity until August, at least for us in the UK, to see the Milky Way in pure darkness. Let's make this month's Wittens the Milky Way, which I'm sure you'll all be happy about. So get out there, photograph the Milky Way, use the hashtag Wittens, and hopefully I'll be featuring your images in the next video. Coming up on my channel very soon, I'm hoping to get the A7 III, the Sony A7 III astrophotography review up. Hopefully get a couple of videos up from my recent trip to Cappadocia in Turkey. But I am away for two weeks in May. I'm going to Tenerife and La Palma in the Canary Islands to photograph the Milky Way and all the wonderful things in the night sky. So if you want to follow my adventures in the Canary Islands, Hit me up on Instagram, follow me, and I'll be sharing my adventures through the stories feature. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Pew.